I cannot believe I am making this video right now. Oh my god. What's up guys? My name is Lisa if you guys are new here and in today's video as you guys can see from the title I have officially quit my corporate job. Yay! So this video I just once again have to reiterate I cannot believe I am making this video because this is the one goal that has taken me the longest to achieve. This is the goal that has been in my mind for so long like much longer than you would think actually and I'm gonna reveal that in a very quick second from basically ideation to actual execution. This is the longest I have ever taken for anything in my entire life. I wanted to talk about obviously how I got here. I'll do a little bit of a background in case you guys are completely new to my channel. And I will also talk a little bit about the why and then more importantly, a little bit of the how and some of the hurdles. And if you guys are also watching this video because you are also thinking about quitting your corporate jobs, I am hoping that some of the points of this video will help you reach your decision. Hopefully and maybe have you join me on this side. So the first thing that I wanted to do as kind of like a disclaimer is I was actually very hesitant to make this video in the first place because I feel like by announcing to the whole world that I am quitting my job, especially literally on probably one of the last days of my job, or as you're watching this video, it's probably gonna be very, very fresh of me outside my job. I felt like I didn't initially want to put that pressure on myself or at least that unnecessary pressure of almost everyone knowing that I had done this, I was almost gonna do this very, very quietly and nobody really knowing and just kind of telling, you know, my close coworkers and my friends, etc. I really thought I was gonna walk out quietly. But then I thought about exactly why I do what I do. So once again, if you guys don't know me or if you guys are new to this channel, a lot of everything that I do on this platform, I have a huge purpose, which is obviously just to help a lot of people. So even through beauty, lifestyle, etc., like it's not just about the, you know, glamour of beauty products and fashion products. My end goal really is to help somebody. So on Instagram, I do a lot of mental health support. I talk very, very openly about therapy. I do constant Q and A's about therapy and mental health on my podcast. You know, we focus a lot on talking about how to get out of your toxic relationship. We also talk about mental health. There's just so many resources through all of the platforms that I do that have kind of different little purposes aiming to help a lot of people who are whoever is listening. Also, obviously, if you guys keep up with my stories, you can kind of see like a more entertaining side of me, AKA the crazy side. And then through my YouTube, it is a lot more of the beauty and fashion stuff. But for me, it's mostly because I wanna help you guys find more comfortable clothes, products that actually work and are worth it. If you guys actually watch my beauty reviews, I do like price breakdowns, okay? I'm not just telling you like, oh, this product is great. I'm like, which one is the biggest bang for your buck? Through all of my platforms and channels, my one goal is to help you in some way, shape or form, whether it's self-confidence, therapy, mental health, relationship, etc. That being said, after kind of reflecting on all of that, I realized that I have to make this video because if anyone is watching this video and also are in the position of wanting to quit their job and are currently going through some of the things that I have gone through to reach this decision. And if one person can find this video helpful, then I would have done my job. With that being said, for today's video, I will do a little bit of a background first. Then I'm gonna talk about exactly why I brought myself to do this and then end with the sort of struggles and kind of advice, etc. The first part is, if you guys are coming from Instagram, then you probably already know, but I work in one of the biggest telecommunication companies in Canada. I graduated with a business degree and I got my job actually directly out of university. In fact, I signed this job before my senior year and I had planned to already work this job as well. So what I was doing before, it was very, I guess, like business oriented. It was labeled as marketing, but it's really not marketing. I did the strategy and execution of these bonus incentive programs for call center agents, essentially helping call center agents and creating these incentive programs that allowed them to hit their KPIs and created a program program that would motivate them the most. This was the job that I had up until now. 
the reason why I wanted to leave and it wasn't just about this particular job. If anything, I really liked what I was working on. I just needed to leave any type of corporate job in general because I realized that I was not serving my own purpose in life. So as I had already previously mentioned, I really want to help people with certain things and I just felt like the job that I was holding, given the position that I had in the company and also the company that I was working with, I was actually in a very, very, very replaceable position. Unlike if maybe if you were at a startup and you're like one to five people, if you leave, that's probably very detrimental. But you know, I was working at this huge company. I just felt like any person with sufficient Excel skills, qualitative analysis skills, etc., some sort of creativity was able to replace my job. In fact, anyone who had graduated from a similar program, I probably could strongly advocate you to take over my position. I didn't feel like I, as a person working at this company, was replaceable. And I actually did get a taste of this last year. I took a three week mental health leave, basically with COVID going on and etc. And someone on my team had also just left. I was one person balancing two people's jobs and I was kind of in a toxic environment. All of this together caused me to leave for three weeks. The day that I left, even though I was the only person that knew how to do this job, I was replaced immediately by someone else from a different team. Not replaced, but they found a replacement for me. It was very telling that, you know, I was working on something that was replaceable. And as someone who was constantly having a goal to want to do something that I loved every single day, it made me feel like I wasn't serving my life's purpose if someone can so easily come in and take over. For me, a lot of it was to find my life purpose. Like I said, if you guys know me from before or if you've been a follower, me quitting my job this time or this year or whatever it is, isn't just about me doing full-time influencing or whatever. I will continue to do full-time influencing and I hope that I can provide more content obviously, but a lot of it for me is also being able to take a gap year and finding something that really is serving what I'm supposed to be here doing. And I wanted to give myself one year to kind of search for a bigger project or a bigger purpose, etc. whatever that may be. At this moment right now, I'm still working here as I'm filming this. But right now with my full-time job and also with all the things that I am doing with the brand partnerships, etc., I do not have the time to explore any additional opportunities. So for me quitting right at this moment, it isn't just about 100% taking influencing full-time. That part is still going to remain constant in my life. But another part of it is being able to search for something that is going to resonate with me and I guess my purpose. A lot of that was the whys of why I decided to quit. The second section that I wanted to talk about is how did I get here or some of the decisions that got me here. Another reason why I wanted to make this video, I don't know about the people that are watching, but for me, a lot of my inner circle and a lot of the people that I know all have, you know, very stable, amazing corporate jobs that they love. I feel like everyone that I know personally has a job. So having to think about the notion of quitting was actually extremely lonely because I didn't really know a lot of people that are self-employed. Hence why this video, I really hope that makes you feel not as lonely in terms of having to kind of like decide. This was extremely scary for me. Nobody kind of can relate to the feelings of wanting to quit or just like not having kind of like a backup job, I guess, or like not a traditional job. For me, the biggest concern and my biggest priority was making sure that I was able to sustain my myself through this gap year or whatever it may be. My biggest priority and concern was to make sure that I wasn't going to impact anybody, especially my parents. I didn't want them to feel like because I was quitting my job, I'm going to have to financially rely on them. So I needed to come up with all these contingency plans, etc. Some of the plans that I had made up and I was watching this video and it was talking about write the things that scared you the most and then write what you can do about it. Basically measure whether or not it was actually that scary. I worked on this with my therapist. I worked on this a lot on my own, but basically my list was really just if I quit my job and I have no money, etc. What can I do about it? Or what would be the worst that can happen? So the first thing was coming up with a rainy day fund, which that was what I was working on the most, trying to build up a rainy day fund in case things go wrong. If I could still pay for my mortgage, if I could still pay for some of the other side things, I think mortgage was really the biggest concern. 
thinking that I had my mortgage to pay for the contingency plan I had two which was one having my own rainy day fund which I started saving very rapidly and trying to just aggressively get to my number which I had in mind the second thing was also understanding that if I also run out of my rainy day fund then that would mean I would have to move out of my apartment in Toronto rent it out and then probably have to come home that initially used to be the scariest thing for me because I was so in love with living on my own so in love with Toronto that for me it was almost not an option for me to move out but now as I'm even filming this it is now my fifth month into living in Vancouver with my parents and honestly it has actually been not bad so it gave me a taste of you know my worst case scenario and it wasn't even that bad so I basically decided that I had my rainy day fund and even if that runs out the worst case scenario is either I have to move back home or I have to get another job when it comes to finding another job if you're also in this situation I feel like it is really important for you to also understand that if you do make the decision to quit your job it is not a permanent decision you can change your mind and you can go back to the workforce anytime I think that was something that even though it scared me I think mentally makes sense because actually upon three weeks before I officially handed in my resignation I actually got an offer from a competing telecommunications company and they offered me a position that was slightly higher than mine and offered almost a third higher of the salary that I was currently getting and I actually turned it down because I was like listen I am literally so close to quitting I don't want to burn any bridges but if my gap year does not work out I will reach back to you and come back and get this job that experience had also taught me that with the amount of work experience that I currently have accumulated I was three years in I graduated from a prominent business program it made me realize that you know finding a job afterwards didn't seem as hard as I had made it seem in my head that job was already pretty much secured for me if I had wanted it like I said I had turned down so my worst case scenarios were either you know move back home or get another job or both which both of them I had made peace with something else that I was thinking about is the job that I was currently at is not my dream job even if I had resigned and was gonna look for another corporate job there was a higher chance of me being happier there anyway because I think I would be able to find a place with better culture better pay and probably within an industry that I was truly passionate in whether it's in apparel or beauty or I don't know just really anything else I don't know so that was kind of the hows of why I made this decision. Another reason was because I recently did my tax return. I found out that all the other income that I had been making from everything else on the side actually accumulated to a lot more than my full-time salary. That helped me figure out that it was going to be a good time since the monetary value was eventually taking over. And on top of that, I think that if you guys are also in this position, I was actually going to quit even without knowing that my side plus added together made more than my full-time job like I was actually gonna quit even without knowing that because of my rainy day fund I think a lot of the times especially if you have a rainy day fund not saying for every person that quits their job you need a rainy day fund I think everyone's situation really really depends you know depending on how much financial support you can get from elsewhere personally I chose to have no external financial support because my parents have their own things going on and I really wanted to make sure I didn't impact them but also just you know if you can move home or whatever I think that would also make the financial pressure a lot better but what I personally found last year and what nobody talks about which is what I want to talk about today is the mental struggles even if you think you have everything you need the mental struggle of still executing on the decision because there were a couple times last year I hit my goal I did the math calculated exactly how much expenses I would need to cover for one year if I wanted to explore my gap year and how much money I would need to to save. Basically, I hit that number a couple of times, but even upon hitting the number, it did not make me feel comfortable enough to quit. I was still extremely scared. I was still extremely hesitant. A few other things happened, but I want to talk about basically how I mitigate that fear. So besides like the therapy and more specifically, I will go through some of the therapy strategies in my podcast because we are doing a whole episode on career. Make sure you guys check that out because we are releasing it also around the same time. I will leave a link down below with the mental struggle of doing 
so a lot of the things that I had to think in my head and trying to tell myself that it was okay were things like what would your 90 year old self on your deathbed <laughs> think about you today and I think a lot of it also was thinking about how if I was 50 years old like one day with the life that I would have when I'm 50 wondering what would have happened if I had gone a different route and I think the fear of not doing this surpass the fear of doing this me quitting is absolutely terrifying but me sitting at home at the age of 50 wondering what would have happened if I quit actually scared me a little bit more which brings me to where I am today another thing also is depending on who is watching this but if you are in a relatively similar situation as I am personally I do not have kids I don't have a husband I don't even have a boyfriend so I really don't have to answer to anyone. The level of risk that I have right now is currently very, very minimal by me quitting my job. Now that I've eliminated my parents being like a potential victim of my decision because I had my funds ready, etc., and my ongoing income, I realized that I wasn't dragging anyone else down with me if things shall go wrong. If I have to move back home with my parents, which I've also discussed with them, I even told them like, at least while I'm doing this, I am not carrying like, two little kids with me and a potential husband. Right now, I feel like I am at the lowest risk point in my life to be doing this. Absolutely no dependents, etc. I'm able to explore this current opportunity. But also going back to when I was a little bit terrified, it wasn't a mental struggle for five whole months. I think everything does eventually happen for a reason basically if you're scared don't force yourself like still get you to that mental place where you are comfortable to do this it actually did benefit me waiting a little bit longer than i needed to because my fear that dragged this entire process out actually allowed me to purchase a couple more things for the business and also save for my business so the first thing is i actually hired someone last year and my goal moving forward and my biggest priority is i needed to make sure that for the next year I can continue to pay her because if I quit my job I'm not gonna have to let her go for me my number actually increased and I needed a little bit more time to get to that new goal in order to make sure I was also able to sustain her as well the second thing was not just sustaining my own daily life but also hit a new number basically paying for her and then the second thing was because I had gotten out of a relationship I was not planning to live with my parents I realized I needed my own vehicle as well so I took a little bit more time in order to be able to buy my own vehicle so it could transport me for all of my own business needs so those were two additional goals that you know I might have not been as comfortable with if I had quit early everything does happen for a reason and I guess what I'm trying to say here is that even if you have your rainy day fund today or even if you realize you were prepared to do your worst case scenario and move back home with your parents even if you have everything you quote-unquote need if you are scared don't worry it is so common not enough people talk about that about the fear keeping you up at night so if you are feeling that the message that I want to leave with you is it's okay and it's okay to wait a little bit longer until your mind catches up if you wait a little bit longer for your feelings to catch up to your mind of what you need to do some external things can actually happen and help you before you actually take that leap of faith anyway yeah that's pretty much all I had to say I feel like the biggest part of this whole journey besides you know all the things that you need to do logistically a lot of it has to do with the mental struggles which I will once again go into more detail on the podcast has to do with therapy and I constantly see so many different people in order to help me get to this decision so I really really encourage if you guys are watching this and you guys are also thinking of quitting your job if you have any more questions leave it down in the comment section down below but also I know how you feel I know what you guys are thinking and yeah feel free to leave any questions or even listen to the podcast of some of the resources that I did to help me. We're going to do an entire segment on career change and basically just like industry change. So I think that would be super helpful for those who are currently in their jobs that are not really happy with your jobs. The thing that kept me up the most once again was if you don't do this or if you don't do what you're thinking of doing, what are you going to regret more? Whether you stay your current position or if you actually go and make a change. And a lot of the times, 
things, taking the risk and doing the action will actually lead to less regret than not doing anything at all. So I guess that's what I'm trying to leave with you guys today. Anyway, I am very excited to start this chapter. As I'm filming this, this is actually just the week that I have resigned. I actually haven't started my full time self-employment yet, but as you are watching this video, I will be fully self-employed. I'm super excited for this chapter and I'm really, really excited to work on some new projects and hopefully I get to share some of the projects that I have in mind today with you one day and feel free to follow along on my journey. But I hope you guys found this video either helpful or at least if you guys are just wanting to understand why I did what I did, I hope you found the answers that you were looking for. <laughs> I don't even know. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.